All right, guys, this is take two of episode six of the Michael Boothby Show. Uh, it's six o'clock on March 7th, 2019, and I'm going to bring on my friend, Dustin Borlack. Okay, looks like it's going to be time, so we're in good shape. Because it's adding... There he is. All right, yes. it's working. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on. It's like you were there, and then you weren't there, and then when I pressed the invite, it was just like it just said add people to the broadcast, but not like invite people to the broadcast, but not get them on. So who knows? We're here, man. That's great. <laughs> you made it work. I'm in Durango. That's... You're in Chicago. How how you doing, man? Good, man. Uh, today was a good day. Um, just like kind of getting my calendar together. A lot has been happening and okay. took today to pretty much get organized. Cool. Yeah. And then, uh, those days. yeah, recently too, just got back from a long road trip. Uh, okay. My girlfriend, Beverly drove her back from or flew to San Diego and then nice. drove across the country to help move her back to, to Florida. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think because um, you guys were both at the Curating Mindfulness event. I think you mentioned exactly. that. So from San Diego all the way to Florida. Yeah, it was quite the journey. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I think we actually, we actually talked about this back then. Um, but how we talked about the concept of how, you know, like a road trip, um, it's a lot like a psychedelic trip, you know, there's a reason both the words have trip in it. And it's like, cause you, you start the, when you start the road trip and you end the road trip, you know, you're almost a, a different person. Absolutely, man. <laughs> I totally, uh, totally believe that. And this one was definitely filled with a lot of beautiful visuals as one of those. Oh trips. yeah. Indeed. Tell us about them. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a huge fan of the mountains. Mm. So, you know, just going from California into Arizona, a little bit through New Mexico, um, and then into Texas. Like, the landscape just changes so much. Uh, it was clear skies that day, and just being out kind of in the middle of nowhere just gets me so excited. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I feel that, yeah, um, driving out to Colorado. Hey, you guys, if you're all just joining, we got Brenton, Enzo, Drake, Shelly, Satchel, Guys, thank you for joining. If you guys um, can press the like button, the love button, yeah, ha, do that. ha, angry, Please. whatever you're feeling, if you just press those buttons, guys, because it's going um, to allow us. Let's try to get the most us. angries today. Yeah, the most angries. Let's get, let's get yeah. provocative today. Um, but yeah, guys, just press those buttons because uh, that's going to help us get higher up in the feed, allow more people to come and join um, and any time during this broadcast, feel free to use those buttons. Feel free to comment on anything we're saying. I'll probably stop every now and then and just ask some questions, see if we're making sense. Uh, if we go off the rails, which we probably will, we usually, we usually do on this show, uh, which is how I like it, you know? There you go. Um, but cool. Oh, we got an angry. Cool, cool, cool. Megan Morgan joined. Hey, how's it cool. going, Megan? Press like, press love. And let's keep going, dude. Um, where where to begin, man? Man, I mean, also, thank you very much for having me on. This is a pleasure. Like, you're doing something really cool. Yeah. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah what I think it, maybe let's start. Uh... Okay, go on, go on. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, what would happen if I sent a text right now to just remind somebody that I'm on, like, hey, mom, don't forget. Yeah, go, go for it, definitely. Forth? I'm going to try it. Yeah, yeah. Super quick. Here Let's we go. see. So, Dusty is sending a text right now. We're gonna see. We're gonna see if if he can send a text from his phone, and come back to the feed. It's not. It's not looking positive. I'm looking down at the screen, and I'm seeing. Oh, you're back. Okay, cool. I'm back. Cool, because exactly. I looked down at the computer and there was a big error sign. But you're back. You, it's like it's like you you died and then you came back to send a text. Yeah, that's what <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Seriously, like people will be like, "Is he dead?" And then he comes back, <laughs> and 
That's probably like my 30th time in real life that that's happened. Wow. Then I think this let's, is my uh, Michael Boothby show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, so how's Durango? Oh, oh man. It's good. It's good. Um, we had our first weekend of training um, this past weekend um, of our leadership program. It was really intense. Um, learned a lot. And then we had uh, our first meeting on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, today, today's been, like you said, like you're kind of just organizing. I think, you know, I woke up early and I you know, was making a lot of posters for the show, um, doing some editing, because now I'm editing all these videos, adding an intro and some credits and to upload them on YouTube. But yeah, to kind of kind of have an archive, because I know I like going live on Facebook, but I think the YouTube is kind of where I'm going to keep it, because you can upload the videos and I can use them for a website or, yeah. or pretty much anything. And, you know, then people can listen to it, to the show in their car or at home. And oh, cause Facebook, I know, for videos, it's like it can be a little clunky. So. Sure exploring that um but yeah today was um i'm kind of feeling a lot though i'm definitely missing chicago um mm. missing sasha missing everyone um and you know i kind of had to like have a me day because i've been i kind of feeling a lot of the energy of my group um sure. and definitely kind of just uh, the, the theme today is like just chilling so like i'm doing this show and after this i'm just gonna like watch a dumb movie or something and just there you go man out. that helps yeah you what's gotta like, do it yeah what's some of those movies like do you have anything that you do repeat to or like what would be something that you would watch like to kind of like chill the mind ferris bueller's day off nice you know it's it's one of those films i've seen so many times you know everything that's gonna happen but mm. you're just smiling and laughing the whole way through okay you know it's just such a fun journey yeah <laughs> I can see you, like, being Ferris. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably why I like that film so much, is because yeah. I really resonate with uh, Ferris Bueller. Maybe there's a part of me that wishes I was Ferris yeah. Bueller. Yeah, <laughs> I think, uh, wasn't, or yeah, that was filmed in Chicago, too. Or yeah, in, right? In Chicago, North Burbs. I think so, yeah, I think, I think so. And then probably also the city, but just yeah. to bring the focus back to you, because I think, you know, I kind of answered, you know, this is what I'm doing today to kind of chill out and recharge. And, you know, dude, you're, you're in six bands. You're constantly playing drums. Now you're, yeah. you're, you're doing the didgeridoo. You're doing these healing events. So, you know, you're a yeah. busy man. And I know. So what, what do you do, you know, to kind of recharge and, and chill out? Yeah. Um, today, you know, I slept in, which was probably like 830. I noticed that it was sunny outside. So when outside, I actually started my day with a walk. Um, mm. every day is a smoothie, mm. um, banana, blueberries, kale, cacao, cinnamon, hemp protein. Like that's like my morning ritual. Nice. Yeah. I did that. And then what else did I do today? Yeah. Organize the calendar. Um, and actually mm. did a lot of rudiments today, uh, for drumming. Nice. So the basics. Yeah. Back to the basics. And really I've actually been getting some a few injuries while I've been playing. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and I've just been noticing some things going on in my hands and my arms that I've never noticed before. Oh, wow. And I think it's because I've been having a lot of shows, but I haven't been doing a lot of rehearsals. So I've mm. been going from like zero to 60 without really yeah. filling in my week with those, uh, like, in you know, drums is endurance, cardio, um, a lot of small muscle movements. So when you sure, don't, yeah, yeah, when you don't stay warm with that, uh, they can kind of creep in and give you some cramps. So like every day now, I'm just doing lots of workouts. Yeah, I was gonna say they're like, there's got to be like wrist and hand mm -hmm. exercises that you can do to keep it all stretchy and strong. Exactly, man, and it's um, it's different too. I drive Lyft, so I'm holding a steering mm -hmm. wheel a lot. Okay. So I'm just constantly always very aware of my like I guess hand posture. And how I lift things and just take my time with everything to not injure myself. That's good. Yeah, because, you know, you, uh, you're you still young. you got a whole lifetime ahead of you of drumming and music. You That's know? what I'm saying. I'm like, these arms can't be given out on me now. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's talk about that. Obviously, you sent me your bio. But I want to hear, you know, like, 
how did you, you know, it seems like you were introduced to music at a young age and you just, you just kept going. And uh, yeah. I want to hear more about, about your story with that. Sure, man. Yeah, there's a few things that I really remember. Um, my parents always listened to like good, I would say like 80s and 90s music. Mm. Um, they listened to a lot of what was on the radio, but I remember my first concert, I was two or three. My parents took me to Blue Oyster Cult and lover boy cool. um and then i started to go into like a bunch of concerts with my family after that from like fifth grade on and would like bump into my gym teacher who's like getting drunk in the <laughs> lot nice um, <laughs> and one of the bands that probably influenced me the most just to like get me started was probably like hootie and the blowfish or bush wow just wow i'm in my house yeah. Yeah. So I was just started to uh, to drum along with that kind of air drum um, and mm. showed some interest. I didn't have any instruments at that point. Um, and then specifically one Easter, I remember in the basket, I had a bag of balloons and mm. then like a case of new pencils that hadn't been sharpened yet. Yeah, yeah. And I just like blew up a balloon and then just started playing on it like a drum with these pencils and was hooked. Right. Interesting. Yeah, you're just like whatever you had in front of you. Yeah, whatever I had. And then, yeah, even before I had a drum set then, I formed a band with people in my neighborhood and cool. just started writing songs like in my garage using pots and pans or garbage cans. Wow. And how old were you? Um, That would have been like seven years old. Oh, my God. That's yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah. So writing lyrics, writing songs with my neighbor who had a guitar and somebody else had a keyboard on our street. And I just started grinding then. It's like, yo, we oh, got yeah. stages. Wow. See, I, I think that's so amazing because, you know, I, um, I didn't really get into music until middle school because my, my dad had these uh, two guitars laying around and... I remember I used to go out into the garage and I looked at them like, man, I, I want to play these. And, you know, I'd pick them up and just like, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. Sure. And it wasn't until seventh grade that I was like, you know what, I want to learn how to play this. And I, I think I got like a teach yourself, my mom bought me like a teach yourself guitar book from Costco or something. And it was just like chords and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I started with that. I think the first songs I learned were like, you know, like Seven Nation Army. Yep. Um, the that's simple stuff, Blink-182. Because that's all I wanted when I got into music. I was like, I just want to be able to play Blink-182 and all, sure. all those songs that I love. Um, so it started with that. Um, and then, you know, I, I think I was in like a few bands in high school, but I wasn't too serious. And I still, I don't think I had the technical skill Mm -hmm. So we ended up just kind of jamming, and, and that was cool. I was my, my first band where we like really kind of jammed out every week. It was, uh, what are we called? Um, <laughs> Subject to Sanity. And we were yeah. like, drop D, you know. But, like, you know, we never actually wrote any songs. We would just end up, like, we played the same song every week, and uh, yeah. it was cool. Um, That's awesome, man. A, cool. Uh, Beverly Kennedy just said, talk about MD tonight, too. It's okay. one of the most amazing parts of your story. Okay. Um, I don't. What is MD? Um, so MD stands for muscular dystrophy. Oh wow. Yeah. So I'm kind of lumped into the muscular dystrophy category, but what I have is myopathy. Okay. And when I was born, um, just yeah. as I developed, they were noticing that my muscles were developing slower. Hmm. Um, it was taking me longer to walk, even to like support my head. And things like that. And I had a biopsy, I think, when I was maybe, I don't know. And realized I had multi-mini core myopathy. And it is oh, a wow. non it's a non-progressive disease. Um, fortunately, they're still doing more research. But when, when they found this out, I was one in 15 people in the world that they knew about with what I have. Holy crap. Yeah, so I'm actually not capable of building muscle mass. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. yeah. And, and you're a drummer. Yeah. So how did you, how do you manage that? How did you, you I mean, know? I have some 
type of muscle, you know, to stand, balance, and do all those activities, but it's way, way less than what somebody my age would have. And then it's actually like kind of suggested not to really try to work out too hard because when you're working out, you tear muscle and then you regenerate more muscle. Right. And if I was tearing my muscle, I wouldn't be regenerating anything new. I would just be recovering probably a little bit slower as well. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I just pretty much didn't let that stop me. You know, it's the only thing that I've known. So it's luckily I haven't had to like not have it and then it come into my life later. Yeah. Um, so I've just learned to just like do things like just a little bit differently. And I also, love that. Yeah. And like grateful that for the perspective that it's given me. And also I've had a lot of examples of um, like even hiking on trails where there's people who are like totally more able bodied than me, but they're having a yeah. way I'm on the trail. And it's like whatever you're excited about that can trigger just something in you that just takes over your body and you can push through those moments. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that's like the whole kind of mind over matter, um, mm -hmm. which is beautiful. Um, I think yeah. I, I experienced um, kind of a similar thing when I was learning to play guitar, uh, maybe not, not as extreme, um, but let's see if, if we can see it. But if you can, if you can see my, my pinkies, you see oh, that, yeah. that they like, they yeah. bend, they bend inward. The old and like, you go like that, what's that? <laughs> the old cockeyed pinky. Is that what it's called? Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, me either. Um, but yeah, like my pinky, I th like my pinky finger is just like totally in love with my ring finger. It's just like humping him all day. Huh. And I have a. <laughs> and I can't can't do anything about that. Um, I actually yeah. got. I remember going to the doctor and getting an X-ray. And when you look in the yeah. X-ray, the bone is actually like twisted. So it, it sure. literally like only turns this way. Yeah. Um, but when I, when I was playing, learning to play guitar, I got really frustrated with a lot of chords. Mm -hmm. And I still get frustrated today. There's like a lot of jazz chords where yeah. you need to use like all, all your fingers. And it's like, I just, I just can't make that stretch. I know, man, I got one similar. Actually with the pinky thing, I think that's like a very unique, um, what was, what would it be called? Like a... Uh... I don't know. It's common though in, in humans where like the curved pinky thing is a thing. I know mm. my buddy and a lot of people in his family all have curved pinkies. It's a very unique mutation. Um, yeah. But my wrists actually don't even turn over all the way. I'm joined. These bones are joined at my elbow. I'll see if I really? can show can, you. Can you? Yeah. Can you show us? That's as far as they go. So I can't really. Like, if you're you can't give... like, can you not? Like, do that? Like, no. If you're going to give me change, like, it would fall oh. out. So I, I bring the two hands in, give them the old two hand or the old cup, put it in the cup. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing, though. It's like, and, and despite all of this, you're like yeah. one of the best drummers I've ever seen. Oh, thanks, man. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Um, yeah, I think that's like, like that's a that's a story that 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 that, that people need to hear about because you know we have so many we make up so many excuses for why we can't do things or this or that. I'm oh, not totally. tall enough. I'm not rich enough. I'm not. And here you are. Yeah. You're like fuck it. I I love music so much. I'll find a way. Yeah, and it and it feels great, and really, it doesn't take as much strength as people think it does. I mean, there's drummers who I look at who are totally able bodied. And I'm like, cool, I'll never be able to do that. But there's yeah. so many other avenues that you can go through, and you don't have to be the strongest or the fastest to be one mm -hmm. of the best. Yeah, it's like, and this is a, a theme that's already kind of emerging on this show, is that, like, really, all you need to be is you. And yeah. people will love you for you. Um, and, sure. you know, it's like whether, you know, you know, obviously we have these like idols we look up to, inspiration, especially in music. And it's like, but, you know, that's all they have to be is inspiration. And we take what we love, but then we make mm -hmm. it our own. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's a beautiful thing. And with drums, too, it's a lot on the reflex or the bounce back. So if mm. you think about it, you're really just throwing a little bit of energy at the drum. And if you're doing it right and your fulcrum's right or your fulcrum's right on the drumstick, it's just going to bounce right back up. Yeah. Lots you don't of, need much. Lots of... 
You don't need much, man. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm I'm reminded right now. I remember. Um, I think I was in sixth grade, and I saw uh, Blink One Eighty Two at the time. Mm. I think I was living in Orlando, and I think like Travis Barker, he had like an awful leg injury, and oh. like you know, so he or I don't I forget because I think it was he was in plus forty four. I think also when he, like his arm was in a cast, and he was literally playing with one hand, and then like had yeah. like a foot trigger. Yeah. But I remember at this show, I think he he like broke his leg or something mm-hmm. because I remember he was like playing, and then when during his solo he was like booking it in a wheelchair, like down to this other drum kit. And it was uh-huh. like, I think then he was using like, I think he was using like a hand trigger or something to do uh-huh. like the bass drum or something. But it's like in the okay. same vein, it's like one of the best drummers in the world and like missing a limb and he's yeah. still finding a way and he's still doing these shows. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would suggest to everyone who's listening right now, if you're a Travis Barker fan, but he just did a podcast with Joe Rogan and talks mm. about like so many injuries that he's had and overcame. Oh, that dude's a beast. I'm, I'm just not... gonna, I'm just gonna find that link and just put it in the comments for people. Sure. Um, when when was the? Oh yeah, it was twelve. Oh yeah, twelve thirty nine. Wow. Um, yeah, it's pretty recent. Yeah, I've just been getting into the Joe Rogan podcast, and there's some. Uh, He's got some really cool people on that show. It's definitely an inspiration for this show. Yeah, um, good ones. For sure, yeah. It just talks to just all these people who are doing such amazing things. Um, yeah, totally. if you guys want to check that out after this broadcast, I just put it in the comments. Yeah, and, um, you know, bring up DMT a couple times, and we can be just like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Oh, I love it. Okay, so we, 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 we went there. We, we, we opened the, the DMT can of worms. Um, yeah. And once, once it's opened, we can't unopen it. So, uh, yeah, maybe let's have a conversation right now about, about psychedelics and maybe your, your experiences. Oh, yeah. I, that's so funny. As, I'm sorry. As soon as I said that, in, in my headphones, I'm playing the Star Wars game, and, like, the sound of a lightsaber just came on as soon as I said psychedelics. Is it, yeah. like, a notification for the game? Yeah. For, it was, like, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> oh, I love that. What a great yeah, sound. That was, and that was synthesized, yeah. too. That's mm. another story, though. <laughs> yeah. Um. That guy probably was on psychedelics, though. Who knows? Probably. Yeah. Or influenced. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, psychedelics. Yeah, we can go into that. Um, Why not? Let's, let's just go all the way to the beginning. The first trip. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was, I was 16. And we all ate. Yeah, can we talk about this on your show? Completely? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, of course. Yeah, man. It's my show. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. Um so yeah, me and two of my other friends we were sick sophomore year. The summer of sophomore mm. year. Um and we each ate an eighth of psilocybin mushrooms and had a a wild, wild trip. Um mm. yeah, my mom wasn't home, I think she was at work. Uh, yeah she, she's probably gonna be listening to this too uh, <laughs> it's fine she, yeah she was at work and uh we just had the house to ourselves and had a great time just like we all kind of like spread out and did our thing and i don't really remember too much about the first trip in it like while the trip was happening but when i came out i just had i felt the most appreciation i've ever felt for the earth every living creature, every family member. Um, I remember thinking like, oh man, my mom's going to want me to cut the grass soon. And I don't even want to cut the grass. <laughs> Kill another bug. I just want everything to flourish and mm. was overwhelmed with gratitude. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I, I had a similar experience um, the fourth time I took mushrooms. Hey, Eric, you're joining at the, the perfect time. I'm just about to start speaking about my, my fourth uh, experience with uh, psychedelic mushrooms. And I was at Ginny Springs in Florida. It was about, um, it was like an hour away from Gainesville, University of Florida, a little bit north. 
Um, and one of, one of my friends had made these chocolates, which, by the way, is the best way to consume psychedelic mushrooms. Because, oh, uh, you know, you, you kind of melt down the chocolate, you, you grind up the mushrooms, and yeah. you pour it in, and then you put it in the freezer, and they freeze, and it's like, you know, it's like eating a chocolate. So I remember my freezer, we right? all, yeah, yeah, we all took them as we were like, we got our, we got our tubes, and, you know, we take oh. them, and then, like, as soon as we get in the water, we're all like, oh, starting to feel something, and we, oh. it's, it was really beautiful, though, because we, we kind of tied all of our um, fun guys, talking to fun guys, says Ben. Mm. <laughs> I love that. That'll be... I'll definitely put that in the YouTube description. But um, there you go. Yeah. So and this is cool again because it's like literally we're about to trip, and then we're also literally going on this trip down this river, and we have all of our tubes, you know, roped together. So we all kind of are like together, but we're all like kind of having our own experience. Yeah. Um. And I remember it was just it was so profound when 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 it's when it started to hit. Um. Like I remember looking up at the clouds, and there were just these beautiful fractals. Um, I just, I just felt the connectedness uh, of all of life on on mm -hmm. Earth, but also where I was in in, in nature. Yeah. I remember floating by, like there was like a little branch sticking out of the water, and there was a turtle just sitting on it. And I remember looking at the turtle, and the turtle was like, "Hey, man, it's yeah. all good." And I was like, "Yeah." It is all good, Mr. Turtle. Yep. Uh, and the, the funniest thing was there was this, I remember there was this one guy who was also, because there was a bunch of people who, who they just come here to float down this river. Um, Dude, and there was this one guy, what's that? Where was the river? Uh, Ginny Springs. So it's like yeah. kind of north central Florida. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. And there was this one guy, I remember he was like one of the most attractive uh, man I've ever seen, but he was on a swan. He was on this giant inflatable swan that was just like, and, and, and the more I was tripping, like the more I was just like, this is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And I kept, I kept like turning to the group and I was like, guys, if you, get, if you ever get lost, follow the swan. And everyone would laugh. I was like, ha, ha, follow the swan. And I was like, you know, it was so like Jefferson Airplane, yeah. <laughs> you know, like this whole, this whole thing. But it, it was so funny. And there's all these moments. And then, of course, it's like, you know, and this is definitely, you know, when it comes to psychedelics, especially like mushrooms, there's always that part of the trip where it's like, it kind of gets intense. And you're like, yeah. ah, you know, and, yeah. you know, but, but at least when you're in nature, it's like, you can just kind of look out at everything and be like, I'm just a part of this and you know, I yeah. don't even have to, to be anything other than I'm being right now. Exactly. Like no pressure, just like sit there, breathe, enjoy. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah. Yeah. And I have to say that experience was like, literally, I felt like I was embodying incubus's aqueous transmission. Oh, I was like, I am literally floating down a river right now. And that song just kept playing in my head. It was so beautiful. Nice. I, uh, yeah. I've listened to that song while tripping, while floating down a river once. Yeah. And how was that? It was great. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure I was with my friends, Jay Rhodes, Jeremy Long. Who else was on that trip? I don't think Schmacky was on that trip, <laughs> but that was good. Actually, one of my other like best experiences was floating down a river. We were on the Rifle River in Michigan, mm. and my buddy and I were the only ones to eat mushrooms out of the whole group. There was probably like maybe seven other canoes. We were the only ones. Oh wow! We did, we did twenty-eight miles in seven hours. Wow! Yep, caught a snapping turtle and brought him on our canoe with us for a while. What's it with turtles? When uh, you're on mushrooms, the turtles just kind of, they like flock to you. Yeah, they're like the river Cocopelli of the trip. Cocopelli, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, Cocopelli is like that uh, figure, I believe it's it's like southwestern Native American mm. um, where he has an instrument and it looks like he has dreads. Mm. And it's like cut out and that is, Cocopelli is the one who leads you into the spirit world. With his food okay. or his didgeridoo, one or the other. He has something Ooh. plain. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I feel like you're definitely, definitely like a little bit of that in you. Definitely take some inspiration from the Coca Pelle. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you know, maybe, um, hey, if you guys are just joining, um, you know, press like, press love, press any of those react buttons. Thanks for watching. Um, also, yeah, thanks for watching. Also, guys, like, 
you can you can comment <laughs> anytime you want on what we're saying, and I encourage it. You know, you can have your own dialogue um, as we're having our own dialogue, and, and especially if you have any questions, like yeah, I'm, I'm, questions I'm, I'm, please. yeah, I've, please, you know, feel free to redirect this conversation to wherever you want it to go because yeah, this show is really people, about you guys. Have four questions right now, right? Yeah, yeah so. We'll, We'll bring it open, but also, you know, like, are we making sense? You know, I mean, obviously we're talking about psychedelics right now, which I know is a, is a topic that, especially if it's um, an experience you haven't had before, it can be a bit scary. Um, I know we tend to fear what we don't know. Um, sure. Tracy Fox asks, what kind of questions? Um, about anything that we're talking about, you know, or anything about Dusty. Um, Jana says, hi, Dustin. Oh, and Michael. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Welcome. Um, yeah. Any questions at all, Tracy, about what we're talking about, about Dusty, about me, um, about music, about psychedelics, about spirituality. Mm, you, know, you can ask travel. We love travel. We've, we've talked about our road trips. And, you know, I, well, let me just ask you a question right now, Dusty. Where's the... Um, Where's like the coolest place that you've traveled to? And actually, no, let me rephrase. What was the place that you traveled to that you like didn't even expect to be that cool and it ended up being like, whoa? Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, I guess my first time going through the Smoky Mountains. Mm. You know, I just didn't really know. I knew it was like we were going to drive through it and I knew there was going to be mountains. But, uh, yeah, they're like so lush and now it's one of my favorite places that I've ever been. I'm going back in six weeks, me and some friends, we got a cabin, um, like a two bedroom mm. cabin. We're going to be out there hunting for morel mushrooms for like that six days. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's so, yeah. oxygen is so good. <laughs> yeah, right. That's my, uh, what I'm loving right now about being out in Colorado is just the air. Um, we got a question from Tracy Fox. Tracy asks, Tracy have y'all ever been to a hot spring? I've been to a hot spring. You have or have not? Sorry, you cut out. I have not. Oh. I, I have. Um, there's actually a bunch here in Colorado. I definitely want to go. Um, I'm trying to remember. I actually don't even remember the last time. I went <laughs> where I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Um, I know I've been to a hot spring, but I can't remember. So that's not like, this is like, I'm not being helpful here. For sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Tracy. I was very close in somewhere in North Carolina and it just wasn't in our budget. It was like some outrageous fee mm. uh, to go into these hot springs. What are you charging people to, to experience nature? Yeah, no, it's, so weird. That's a shame. That's what humans do, Tracy, man. Tracy says SMH, shaking my head. I'm sorry, <laughs> Tracy. Uh, Gina asks, what are the ages of your students? Is that for you? Yeah, sure. Uh, I do have three students right now. Um, hmm. Two that are very... For, for drums? Consecutive, yeah, for drums. Cool. Um, one is Mika. Uh some of these people who are watching might know, but she is, um, she's 10 years old. She is one of, she's in like the top, I believe five, uh, 10 year old female fencers in America. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Fencing. She, yep. She was just in the competition. Um, She's amazing, amazing, huge inspiration. Um, she's actually doing yoga teacher training right now, too. She's, when she gets this, she'll be the youngest yoga teacher in the country. Oh, my God. Yeah. How old is she again? She's 10. Yo, that's incredible. Yeah. Wow. A, a 10-year-old teaching yoga. See, that's what we need more of. We need more kids teaching because because that's one thing i believe i think kids are the ultimate teachers mm, definitely you know and and, and it's a shame because i remember i remember being a kid but also i see it so much now of um especially when i worked um uh in stores when i was doing a 
demos for GT's kombucha. I would see it all the time of just these, um, just these parents in these really tiny ways that they just kind of step on their kids' creativity or they just try to control their kids. You know, don't do that in public. And it's like, man, why don't you just join your kid? Your kid's trying to teach you that, like, you know, it's not all serious and we can play around. And I see it so much, these parents just projecting, you know, their shit and their seriousness onto their kids. And it makes me so sad. Totally. Um, yeah. To finish that question, she was asking the age range. Uh, so mm. right now it's 10 to 34. Wow, that's a big range. Uh, yeah. Let me ask a question about that. Do you, do you teach a 10-year-old the same way that you teach a 34-year-old? Pretty much. Wow. Yeah, you know, depending on how quick they're, they're picking it up and they're learning. Um, and I'm just I'm getting more and more teaching experience. Uh, which I'm grateful for. But yeah, it all kind of starts the same way. Mm. You know, the jokes in class might be different. Um, but yeah, you see there, some people are better at counting than others. And drumming is a lot of just counting to four over and over. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Maybe that's why I, I was never good at drums because I hate counting. <laughs> sure. Yeah, or feeling that most people... We'll be like, oh, like, I'm not a drummer. I don't have rhythm. When yeah. you're walking, you have perfect rhythm. So if you can just count one, two, three, four, when your feet are hitting the pavement, you know, you're so close. There's two out of the four limbs that you'd be using. Wow. See, there's some inspiration for you guys right there. You know, if you don't think you can drum, you can walk. And that's yep. rhythm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Yep. Most drum beats, you know, you got your bass on one and three and your snare on two and four. So imagine your right foot is your bass and your left foot is your snare drum. Exactly. I'm, 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 air, I'm air drumming right now. And you in my it. head, yep. oh, it sounds so good. <laughs> nice. I hear it a little See, bit. I think I can, yeah, right? I think I can keep that four, four beat. But, you know, I, I you know, I, when it starts getting into like tool where mm -hmm. it's like, you know, eight ninths and whatever sure. i don't even know yeah. i'm making that up <laughs> yeah, they do a lot yeah of i love danny carey yeah mm -hmm. sorry <laughs> oh you're good let's talk about tool let's talk about tool because <laughs> they're yep. uh sam botner's on they're here. one of my yeah, you can, what's uh, that i was saying if sam's watching right now he can throw some comments he uh he knows a lot about tool <laughs> you know i think he was he was in on the other broadcast and he was commenting and i don't yeah. think he came back Oh, so okay. Sam, I might have to tag him. I'm I'm, I'm disappointed. Miss no. Uh, Sam Botner, where are you? I just wrote in the comments. <laughs> We're talking about tool. There you go. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe he'll. It's like he just sent a beacon out into his phone. Yeah. He's like, oh my god. We'll see. But no, Tool is, they're one of my favorite bands since uh, yeah. I discovered them. Actually, I didn't discover them. My friend Evan told me about them, I think, in like, I think eighth, seventh or eighth grade. And he was like, mm -hmm. dude, listen to this song. I think it will inspire you. And it was Jambi from 10,000 mm -hmm. Days. Yeah. And I listened to that song was like, holy crap. <laughs> Sam, Sam says, hi. <laughs> Sam, we're talking about Tool. <laughs> He's uh he's very committed. To <laughs> he, he just gave us the <laughs> he just nice. gave us the. Actually, Sam and I are actually gonna go see Tool this summer. We bought I bought the tickets in January for um, um that one concert here. Is it in Illinois? Yeah, we're Got going. It. Yeah, it's Sy System of a Down and Tool, which Perfect. are like I have never seen System of a Down, but as you know, these are two of my like yeah. favorite bands of all time. I think I'm gonna snag some tickets to the Tool Day. Mm, I've seen definitely. System. It was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm just I'm so excited. I've seen Tool before. But it's like it's it's such an experience every time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Danny Carey's great. I've seen A Perfect Circle. Mm. Um, that was phenomenal. It was actually yeah. a really good day. I was at Warp Tour, watching some bands, and then just walked across the street for A Perfect Circle. Yeah. Have you heard of the band Foxy Shazam? I think I've heard of them. I don't think I've listened to them. Yeah, they don't do much anymore, but man, they put on like one of the craziest live shows you will ever see. Just like 
Studa asks for everyone to throw up cigarettes on the stage. He'll light all of them at once, like say like 15 cigarettes, light them, flip them around, eat them with the hots first, and then keep singing. Mm. And he like swallows these cigarette butts. Oh, that's nuts. That's crazy. crazy. <laughs> wow. Um, so, I, I know we were talking about tool, but I, now a question just came to me. So, to you, Dusty, like what, what makes a live show excellent? Mm. Yeah, I would say we can go with a few things. Um, quality of sound. That's super important. You can have an amazing band, but if they're not mixed well, it's not going to sound good. Um, yeah. I really like when, like, you can tell the people are extremely into it. You know, mm. they're not people who are just up there to work. I've seen some people yeah. who are just, like, not enjoying what they're doing or it really looks like that. And that kind of just turns yeah. off instantly. It's like, oh, well, if they don't like it, like, I'm not really a big fan of it either. Yeah, and I've seen that. I think, actually in high school because like one of, they were one of my favorite bands but interpol um mm -hmm. and i saw them um at the house of blues in orlando and it's like ugh, they were just going through the motions and mm -hmm. they sounded exactly like their albums but it's like i almost didn't like that you know because yeah. it's like i for me when i think of like you know what makes an exceptional an exceptional live performance uh my mind goes straight to queen uh, because mm. if you ever watch, you know, I'm mean, obviously Bohemian Rhapsody just came out, which kind of propelled them back into okay. the spotlight. And, you know, the culmination or that, that I haven't seen it, but I heard that, you know, the finale of that is their 1985 Live Aid performance, which yep. I've watched multiple times. And it's like, I mean, Same. that was, ex it's insane. I mean, Freddie Mercury just mm. comes out there and from the beginning just has the attention of the whole crowd, which I think was like 100,000 people. Um, yeah. And he's always, I mean, he's one of my biggest inspirations. Like whenever I get onto a stage, I'm like, I hope I can, I can get the attention of this audience, like even half as much as Freddie Mercury did. Yeah. 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 He is such, he was such an incredible performer. Yeah. That was such a just, good movie um, too, man. Like moments where I was like tearing up, I was just being like reflecting on what it was like to just even fall in love with music in the very beginning. And I felt like that whole mm. movie just like, kept that energy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't seen the movie, but, you know, I've, I've seen Queen so many times and it's like, I don't know. It's like they just brought it to a whole nother level. I mean, in this, and that's the thing. It's like in the studio as well. You know, like, and I think maybe they talk about this in the movie, but like when, when they were doing Bohemian Rhapsody, they're like, you know, let's like, let's multi-track this like 90 times mm -hmm. and, you know, and make this epic song. And I think their producer, whoever the person from the record label at the time was like, this right. song, will, no one, this is, this is crap. No one will ever listen to this. And it's like yep. one of the greatest songs in rock history. I know. I love that. I love when it's just like somebody is such a hard no on something and it becomes one of the biggest yeses in world history. Yeah, and I think that just goes to show, and this is something that I'm all about, is like, you know, when you're kind of on the cutting edge of whether that's music or, or anything in life, you know, you have these, when you're doing something that's never been done before, uh, people are going to doubt you. Sure. Um, and, and even more so, people will, will, will try to tell you to not even do it. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes it's like, exactly. And then like you go and you do that thing and... And you, you create, you know, it's your people like, yeah, exactly. Like 20 years later, people are like, oh, they were a genius. Mm -hmm. And why, you know, why is that? You know, I mean, obviously, I think it's the fear of the unknown. But like, well, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's the fear of the unknown. And just like the people who are saying no to something, I don't know. They're just wasting their time. I don't really believe in the whole no thing of doubting somebody's art. Yeah. You know, let it go. And sometimes it might seem like a no in the very beginning, but you can't eat an apple off of an apple tree a week after you plant it. So. No. Maybe they yeah, have. Yeah, it takes patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not a very patient society, are we? Oh, uh, it's becoming worse now, yeah. Everything can be so yeah. instant. Immediate gratification, social yeah. media, apps, games. Um, 
Yeah, you know, and that's that's some, I think that's a worthy question. Maybe I'll pose this to you. You know, yeah. in 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 this kind of era of of immediate gratification and social media and very fast paced uh, communication and technology, mm -hmm. how do we how do we slow down? How do we how do we keep our humanity um, amongst it all? Yeah, just like really being good and logging off. Mm. get off I know I have problems with it some days um, but I always feel my body feels healthier when I'm not just looking at a screen it's literally the physicalness of just me looking at a screen um, mm. you can go on social media too and be like super motivated you know you see your friends yeah. doing cool stuff and like it can be great for that but also some people yeah. have the exact opposite problem where they go on and they feel like they're not doing enough. Yeah. Um, and both of those can serve you, you know, and you just bring it in and don't let it become something toxic. Let it be a service. Yeah. Once you notice that it's like a problem, really just try and get off. Um, yeah. There's, yeah. Little, and there's like a real world out there, you know. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's yeah. worried about the simulation right now. Go on. Yeah, and it... Go out, go out and be in that simulation because, it, you know, even if it is a simulation, it feels pretty damn real to me. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, it is real, you know. Yeah. It, it is very real and it can be as real as you want it to be or not. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. It's like, you know, we can either escape into our technology and escape into the distraction or, you know, or we can use these tools and to, to really connect with people and to really inspire people. I think that's yeah. what I'm trying to do with this show. You know, I'm just using social, I'm going live. I'm just chatting with people. It's working, um, man. It's working on me. Like I'm definitely inspired something great. Um, yeah. And that's where it all starts. Yeah. And I, I see you, you're, you're, you're pretty active on, on Instagram and yeah. I definitely see you going live with the, um, uh, what are they? Not the hand hands. The idio pans, you know, and I think that's so cool. I mean, like, I think exactly. Oh, you got you got one right right there with you. I, okay, we yeah, gotta got to show off the idio pan. Little Luna Bell. We'll just can you can you play first? Because guys, I, I want to do a quick plug here for Dusty. Dusty's actually uh, he sells these idio pans now, and they come in all shapes and sizes and colors, and they're really cool. Yeah, thank you. They're also the only tunable tongue drum in the world. Very, very, very good if you want to change it up, you know. Usually you pay up to $2,000 for an instrument that's similar to this, which you cannot, mm. ch you cannot tune. You know, what, what you get is what you get. Um, here, I'll give you a little sample with this one. I think this is A major. Okay. Perfect for backpacks, uh, great for hikes, good for road trips, great for kids, great learning, uh, learning instrument for all ages. Yeah. Because you can bring the sound of the universe with you everywhere you go. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe you'll have to post a, um, do you have, you have an online store for those or? There is. Um, I prefer if people go through me personally. Mm, um, okay. I'm working, almost going to have a website ready. Uh, cool. From Beverly. Beverly is working on my website. Uh, Beverly Kennedy. Yeah, she's making a really, really good website. Thank you so much if you're still listening or watching. She is. She um, said, Adam was so excited. He got my drum. And then Sasha said, yes, getting one of those. <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's so good. Like when we were down in Florida with Beverly, mm. um, Adam, she would even Skype with Adam, um, when they were across the country and he would just want her to play the drum over the phone to her. Cause it was so soothing. It was such a cool sound, like yeah. play the drum, play the drum. And now he has it. Um, this instrument is so cool too. Cause this is like great for the people who are like, I'm not musically inclined. 
you've seen these drums yourself. You, yeah. There's nothing you have to do. If you can hit it, if you can like <laughs> physically touch it, it's going to make a great sound. Eugenia asked, Dustin, easier to play with sticks or hands? Mm, as a drummer, um, you know, I enjoy the mallets the most. Um, just for its its bounce back, but the hands is so fun too. It gives it that that different tone, more of like a hand pan tone, um, and then you're not limited to being able to hold mallets. You can play with your thumbs mm -hmm. or your index fingers, and you start building techniques. It's great for hand. Um, they're incredible, man. They have really just brought a lot of positivity into my life. Just having them around my house. I have two drums behind the camera right now. House is always stocked. Cool. Yeah. Hey guys, sorry. Uh, the internet here in Durango has um, it's been less than ideal, um, and I think that the feed just cut out, um, and I lost Dusty. I'm gonna invite him back. Um, see if we can get just get him back on to finish to finish the show. Let me see. Let me. I gotta find him. Yeah, I think there he is. Yeah. There we go. Hey, hey, sorry, Dusty. I think the uh, the internet here has been really shoddy, and it goes in and out. But uh, yeah, you know, I think we can we can wrap it up. Maybe get some some closing remarks. And for the YouTube video, I'll just I'll just splice them back. No one will even know. Cool. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, let's, you know, we already, we plugged the idio pans. Um, so, I mean, now no one's watching because the feed cut out, but it's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let's, um, Wait, yeah. Back. Yeah, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll gravitate back. But so, yeah, if anyone's watching, if you guys, or maybe if you're watching later on, on YouTube, uh, if you're interested in um, checking out an idio pan, uh, you can contact Dust Dusty. Probably the best yeah. way would just be message him on Facebook, Dustin Borlack. Um, you can yeah, search that's right. that. You'll you'll find him. Um, and then Dusty's also in several bands in Chicago. Do you guys have any shows coming up? Oh, what's some shows coming up next Thursday? Uh, playing with one of my cover bands, Evening Dream. This is uh, the one out of the three cover bands that I am helping curate and pick songs for, and manage and helping book. Um, so that's cool. It's a lot of like uh, pop and R and B. Mm. So we're doing everything from like Michael Jackson to Frank Ocean to The Killers to LP, uh, Jason Mraz. I have an incredible female wow. vocalist, Rachel Sarah mm. Thomas. Man, she is so good. We're actually going to be playing The Taste of Chicago this year on July 10th. Mm. Uh, that's going to be a huge show. What else? Um, yeah, I don't have any really original projects. I just played on Sunday a sold out uh, Lincoln Hall show. I believe it was sold out. It was either sold out or just like a few people away. Uh, Lincoln cool. Hall with Michael Deville, and that was me drumming for Jovan Landry. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah if you're into the '90s hip hop, she is your girl. Cool. Yeah, yeah. they're. Um... Any other projects or things you're working on that you want people to check out? Yeah, I would say, you know, stay tuned for just some upcoming more sound journey medicine music. Um, mm -hmm. I'm working with Sam Botner, and we're just, like, Thanks. coming up with ideas right now, but we're going to – we want to release a really cool, unique project. Um, cool. I don't want to speak too much about it just because it's, like, really just kind of all the ideas are coming together. Amazing. Um, yeah, we're going to try to tie it together with, like, some good charities, though. Cool. Uh, the Muscular Dystrophy Association being one of them. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I've, I've seen, you know, you guys, obviously, you guys are two of my, two of my best friends in Chicago, definitely as far as, yep. like, especially in the music scene, you know, you both sure. are really inspiring. And I know we all kind of have... We have a dream. Um, I obviously I've been so busy. We haven't had the time. But system we, of a we bus. Want, system of a bus. Yeah, we want to start a cover yep. band, 
we're going to exclusively play System of a Down in Incubus, and therefore we are System of a Boss. So look out for that this summer. Uh, when I get back to Chicago, I'll, we'll all start practicing, and I'm cool. super excited about that. Me too, man. Cool. Well, Dusty, man, it's been it's been a whirlwind of a show. We yeah, I appreciate about, it, man. Yeah, you know, we, we, we covered a lot. We talked about road trips. We talked about psychedelic trips. We talked about mm. uh, Dusty's... Uh, I don't even want to use the word struggle. I want to say Dusty's uh, triumph, triumph uh, over yeah. muscular dystrophy. One guy, uh, I picked up this one guy, and he was disabled, and he hated that word. He was like, never diss your ability. Love that. You know? Yeah, so. Yep. I can't, I think we got to end on that. That's such a positive Good. note to end on. Guys, never diss your ability. That's right, folks. You heard it here first, folks. Heard it here first on episode six of the Michael Boothby show. I almost said podcast. It's not a podcast yet, but it might be. Um, but anyways, guys, I think that's all we got for tonight. It's Thursday, uh, March 7th, 2019. <laughs> Beverly goes, and we back, and, and we done. Um, so thank you so much, Dusty, for coming on the show. I'm looking forward to collaborating with you in the future, getting back to Chicago and hanging out. You too, Michael. Thank you so much, man. Sweet. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and putting up with all the technical difficulties. I'm going to be merging all these videos together, editing them. If you want to catch it again, subscribe to the Michael Boothby Show on YouTube. Um, I'm going to post all the episodes there with some slick editing. It'll be really cool. That's all I got. Take care, everybody. Cool. Peace, folks. <laughs>